Welcome back, PL families. My name is Colin Henderson. I'm your mindset coach, and I'm so excited to finish this journey on really giving you tools and resources to make mindset matters. And this last training is really gonna summarize our first five trainings and really break down the art and science of happiness. So here's a question to consider as a family. So what comes first? Is it the chicken or the egg? Is it, I need to have success and find achievement first, then I'll be happy? Or is it, hey, happiness, gratitude first, and then I'll attract and achieve success last. Well, the science is very clear. I like to reference Dr. Sean Acor, who's a positive psychologist researcher from Harvard. He has a great book I'd love for you to look at. It's called The Happiness Advantage. And the old type of researching the power of the mind and psychology was just researching the bad stuff, when people feel um, depressed, anxious, and those types of feelings. Well, there's this new field where we are researching, hey, what does thriving look like? What does good look like? And the research is very clear. This thought of, I need achievement and to have this external thing first, then I'll be happy, as in your happiness is conditional to external things. What Dr. Acor and the other scientists have found is that that's a fallacy. What is true is this. People who are happy, optimistic, and grateful first they achieve success faster and sustain it longer. So what are you doing to cultivate happiness? I do not like the phrase, the pursuit of happiness. Let's flip the script and what if we change it to this? The pursuit is happiness. So in this training today, I'm gonna to give you guys some strategies and resources how to cultivate and train happiness. But let's learn from some thought leaders from the Piaf School District on how and why mindset matters. I think empathy is the key with mindset. Um, I think you have to be willing to put yourself on someone else's shoes and really go deep with that. Uh, I have probably apologized this year more as a teacher than I've ever done before. And it's not a cover your butt apology. It's like, I, you know what, we were having a conversation in class and you clearly needed something and I went the other direction with it. And you know what, I'm really sorry I did that. I could tell that didn't help you. And how can I make that better? And how liberating is that, right? So if I had a megaphone or a microphone, I would just remind all adults everywhere, especially adults, because kids are figuring this out and they, they get that slack of being teenagers. We need to listen to our kids. We need to put ourselves in their shoes. And that doesn't mean we don't do material and curriculum. Kids need to learn, right? We're still trying to learn, but we need to look at it from their perspective, always, even when we come back to the classroom. And if we're not doing that, if we're teaching for ourselves or for a paycheck or for our bosses, we're not doing our job. And I think we know that, but that's, that's what I would say to myself first, uh, and I would say to everybody else. Picture yourself in every child's shoes, and what does that child need to get out of their time with you, and just try to do it. You might not achieve it every day, but then if you don't, let them know, I tried my best, let's try again tomorrow. I think that mindset translates to kids, and they see that, and it helps them overcome this. You know, I think the biggest thing is encouraging them when they are doing the little things that they don't think is a big deal is pointing it out um i'm a big love languages fan and so finding what my kids love language is and so um and really honing in on that filling their bucket that's something that um all of the teachers at fruitland really talk about is how are you going to fill their bucket and and how can i fill your bucket and and all of that. And so I think that that's a big part of, um, of instilling that confidence. What's up team, welcome back. We're talking about happiness as we wrap up this series, Mindset Matters. Now, when I think about the art and science of happiness, I think about one of the godfathers of positive psychology, Dr. Mihai Csikszentmihalyi. And he coined this term of optimal performance of joy, of bliss. He calls it flow or being in a flow state. And as a young boy in Hungary during World War II, he noticed the way he would escape the fear of the war and uncertainty was by playing chess. He was fully immersed in the moment, the moves and the steps. He loved so much playing chess and he was just baffled. How come I'm so focused and concentrated and time does not pass? So when he moved to America and he did his research, he was just fascinated. How do we uncover and unlock this deep focus, so he coined that term flow. 
Think of a current from a river. It's powerful. It's non-stop. And think about a current of electricity. There's a powerful force. So let's break down this mental skill or this awareness level of flow. Again, we're looking at happiness. So flow is a combination of balancing, challenge, and skill. So watch this. So if the challenge is too high from that skill, you get anxiety or you feel extra stress and pressure. But if your skill is too high and the challenge is too low, you get boredom. So the challenge is to finding your flow or being in the zone is to look at you know, challenges or events or activities that you're curious about that, hey, I wanna figure this out, that you enjoy, that you wanna master, that you wanna get better at. And if it's too easy for you, you can't access flow. So there are three types of, of zones we live in. Comfort zone, stretch zone, and panic zone. So for me, ultimate fulfillment is not in outcomes, it's in growth. So ask yourself this question. What activities light me up inside? What activities make me come alive? And think back, when was I you know, at my best? Think of times when you were in flow in the zone. Now I'm gonna give you one little caveat about you know, how to cultivate flow. I want you to follow this sequence. Bad thoughts are bad. Good thoughts are good. But no thought is most optimal. Now we can't get to this quiet mind, this flow state by being negative. So a, a, a gateway to access this flow state is to have productive self-talk, to put yourself in environments where you feel challenged, but have a clear goal. Again, flow. The activity is the reward, not the outcome. I'll say it again. A key trait of flow is the activity is the reward, not the outcome. The pursuit is happiness. So I want you to think about this. This is a question I ask any performer that I am coaching. Think of a time when you were super happy, when you were performing at your best, when you felt energy, just endless energy inside of you, when time did not even matter. You were not judging or thinking about past, future, or good or bad. You were completely in the moment. I think of my son Baylor when he, when he does Legos. My son Baylor loves Legos. He doesn't need food, doesn't need music. He sees the goal or the map, what he's trying to build, step by step that process. He loves it. So for me, I find flow when I'm with my family. I find flow when I'm writing. Now, in athletes, they, they call it being in the zone. Music, they call it being in the uh, pocket. So what activities do you feel flow? And then when you think about that, what are your thoughts like in those moments? What are your habits and routines like in that moment? Maybe just pause the video and, and talk about, hey, when are you in the zone? What activities light you up? What activities you know, do you feel that, that sense of challenge, that, that purpose? but you can do it without thinking. You can do it without judging. Talk about that as a family now. Okay, now we talked about flow. I'm gonna break down really bridging the gap between motivation and happiness. So having the right motivation equals happiness. There are four levels of motivation and happiness. The first is really being driven by fear, that fear-centered motivation happiness where you better perform or else the next one is called extrinsic, when you're looking for external things like clothes, car, or be with a certain person, or achieve a certain feat. The next one, as we're moving up the scale and which is the most powerful form of motivation and happiness, is what's called intrinsic, where the joy and the drive is coming from within you. You want to change your outer world, change your inner world, but focus on what lights you up inside, what gives you, you know, it feels good, it feels exciting. Now, the most powerful one is what psychologists call pro-social motivation or happiness, where you connect to something bigger than yourself, when your why and your purpose is connecting to something larger than you. So to bridge this gap between intrinsic and pro-social, I'm gonna give you guys a little happiness 101 training. So to me, there are three key factors. This is gonna summarize our whole training on Mindset Matters. The first thing that we need to achieve ultimate happiness is connection. Harvard did research uh, since the 1930s. They found the number one source of happiness is human connection. So are you connecting to a group 
with your friends, with your family? How are you prioritizing these relationships and connections? Number two is service. Now, when we connect, when we're trusting, when we're vulnerable, when we're part of a group, we create what's called oxytocin. Now, oxytocin is that bonding chemical. When you can serve and help, we get what's called dopamine and serotonin. These are happy chemicals. So seek to serve, don't swerve. Make it about us, not about you. Remember, we over me. The last one, again, these are the pillars of happiness. Happiness 101 is to cultivate and to train the mental skill of gratitude, of optimism. Focusing on what you have, not what you don't have. The science tells us that when we focus on gratitude, research out of Cal Davis, it lowers cortisol and that stress hormone by nearly 30%. It boosts your immune system. We produce about 5 million cells a day. Your cells are listening to you. So we have thoughts of gratitude and when you savor things, when you focus on what you have, it's healing to your body. It boosts your immune system. Research shows that gratitude lowers anxiety and depression. So let's master happiness fundamentals. Let's connect every day. Let's be serving and helping other people at home. Make the big time where you are. Bloom where you're planted with your friends and peer group. But also, let's have some routines of gratitude. You guys did a great job in this uh, six course training on how to make mindset matters. So when and where will you get your mindset reps in? Podcasts, audiobooks, mindfulness, affirmations, spend time to breathe, to visualize, have some uh, visual cues to remind yourself to be present and always to be kind to yourself. I hope you like this series. Um, I'd love to hear from you which lesson was the most impactful for you. Don't hold this knowledge and these resources to yourself. Share it with someone. Talk about it. Let's make mindset training normal. Let's always make mindset matter. And team, you guys know what to do. The body has limits, but the mind is limitless. You are limitless. Thank you so much.